Hi everyone, it's time for another stock of the week. Now, if you are one of my GVI investor newsletter followers, then you'll know what all this is about. I go in through all the research that my team's done for me, but in these free stock of the weeks to the broader audience, I give you sort of the tip of the iceberg so you can understand and see how we do things uh, and the level of due diligence that's undertaken uh, for these stocks. So the one I've got for you today, Katera Energy. Now, <clears throat> I have to admit, I've been shifting my portfolio from tech to energy pretty quickly. And that's the advantage of being a GVI investor reader is that you're not beholden to trillions of dollars and and uh, vested interest of saying, oh, God, I better not get out of everything that we're about and move into something totally different. We don't have that problem. We can just say, you know what, this is what's working now. This is where the research is showing. So with Katera, which is an independent exploration and production company, they've got operations in Appalachia and the Permian Basin. It was formed back in 2021 with a merger with Cabot and Cimarex. Okay. At the end of 2021, Katera had reserves of 2.9 billion barrels of oil. It's not the biggest company in the world by any means. However, more importantly, uh, for a company originally founded in 1989, it's been there for a long time and it's doing well and it's in the energy space and it's the numbers which really attract me to this energy company. Company sells its natural gas to industrial customers, local distribution companies, oil and gas marketers, major energy companies, pipeline companies, and you know, a year ago, probably wouldn't have looked at it. Two years ago, wouldn't have looked at it. Would have all been tech, tech, tech. Three years ago, would have been tech, tech, tech. Well, the world's moved on, as you all know. So what attracted me to the company? Well, <clears throat> wasn't just the political background of what's going on in the world. Actually, it was the numbers and then seeing the momentum and the backdrop of what's going on in the world. Cash return on capital invested, 8%. Not bad. Not the greatest, but not bad. Not bad at all. That's a measure of the amount of cash that a company can generate based on the capital in an industry like this, which is invests a lot of capital, that it's invested. Why is that important? Well, those of you who follow my VGI Investor newsletter and follow the whole Arpish Patel universe of you know, hedge fund insights, you'll know that it's a formula invented by Deutsche Bank, followed by Goldman Sachs Wealth Management for their wealthiest clients, because the higher that number, the more likely the stock is to continue doing well over the long term. Not guaranteed, but more likely. What else have we got on this? Value growth income, that's my own personal algorithm, my proprietary algorithm, which measures the valuation of a company the revenue growth of a company, dividend deals, the momentum. And again, those numbers are solid. Eight, nines, and tens, I absolutely love. Price momentum, 20% over the last six months. You can actually see that the company has been doing rather well. Sortino, <clears throat> that's a measure of reward versus risk. I would have liked to have that been higher because there's, there's a bit of volatility with this company, uh, company's share price. Uh, but last couple of years been well this year and last year been doing well and i think it'll continue given the elevated energy prices and global demand and disruption due to war uh, alpha that's a measure of outperformance of the market good solid volatility now this is interesting well i say it's got some volatility it's at 18 percent well touching 19 percent. it's still below 20 percent, and 20 percent gets the point between where i consider something a higher risk and lower risk so under 20%, it's doing well. I'm happy about that. Really am. Okay. So what about some other figures? A lot of greens. Like I already said, return on uh, cash employed, return on equity, all very good. Forecast price earnings ratio, relatively low. Looks cheap. Okay. Looks cheap to me. Uh, it, I, I think the market's under forecasting how well the company will do. In other words, it's currently priced at a lower level than it should be for the profitability that's expected in the future. It's another way of putting it. Turnover, strong. Of course, borrowing's increased in this environment, but the turnover remains very strong and the profitability has not been hampered by the increase in borrowing at these relatively low interest rates and those rates not like to spike up. Of course, interest rates are rising, but not like to spike up. Operating cash flow, strong as well. Assets increasing, pre-tax profits, all looking good. So on a multitude of measures, particularly forecast growth, which of course I think the market's still trying to get its head around and keep up with, 
A lot of greens, a lot of greens over there. When I look at the longer term uh, price chart on this and the direction, you can see the upward trend, you can see uh, momentum more to the upside. So, you know, not really a anything which is causing me major, major problems. Okay, so hope you like the stock. Thank you very much for watching.